To create a project definition or project template, navigate to the setup menu located at the top of the screen. Go to projects and click on the project definitions option. Inside of this window, click add. Now within the add new project definition window, you'll notice that there are four tabs, project options, assignment options, billing options, and checklist options. Each of these define how this project is going to work, the template that you're building. We're going to emulate a 1040 or individual tax return project here. So inside of the project description section here, we're going to call this individual tax return. Now in the project options section, the first set of options that we come to is the due date section. So for this, we're going to populate in the due date of this project. If the project that you're creating does not have a defined due date, you can leave this option blank and assign it when you create the project for your client. If your project has a defined extension, you can also key that in. And your due date section is finished. The skip weekends and holidays option, located here, is how you would like this project to handle when the due date falls on a weekend or a holiday. What we mean by that is, if the due date falls on a weekend or a holiday, do we want the due date to stay where it is? We would select do not skip if that's the case. Do we want the due date to move to the next business day following that weekend or holiday? If that's the case, we want to select in the forward direction. Do we want it to move to the prior business day before that weekend or holiday? If that's the case, we select in reverse direction. The next option that we come to is the default priority. Now because Office Tools is a due date driven software, which means that the tasks are prioritized based off the due date in most cases, we can leave this as a three, meaning normal. If you did want to pre-elevate your priority for this type of work, simply click this menu and choose urgent or important. If you'd like to de-escalate the priority for the specific type of work, choose number four for below normal or number five. The next set of options that we come to are the date calculation options. These are typically the options that define exactly how we want the due dates of this project to work. For example, every project has a year associated to it. In the case of an individual tax return, we would have something that reads 2015 individual tax return. Now the due date section that you see does not have a year associated to it. And the due date for an individual tax return actually falls the year after the year of that tax return. So in this example, where we have a 2015-1040 tax return, the due date would actually fall in 2016. To make that happen, we need to select the option here that says make tax year calculations. When we select that box, the due date of the project will fall in the next year from the due date of the actual project itself. So in the case of a 1040, the due date will be April 15th, 2016 for the 2015 individual tax return. Although it's not pertinent in this example, use fiscal year ending and use offsets to calculate dates are used for business tax returns as those due dates are typically based off of the fiscal year end of the client. Now, if I select use fiscal year ending, I'm always going to select use offsets to calculate dates with it. You'll never use one of those options without the other. When I selected use offsets to calculate dates, you'll notice that my due date offsets section here changed to full months plus days after year end. Make sure to take into consideration that it is full months plus days after year end. So if we were going to use these options for a 1040, we would need to make an adjustment to the due date section. 
because it is full months plus days after year end, and for an individual, their year ends are typically going to be December 31st, we can comfortably say that the due date for this tax return is incorrect because it is four full months, which means all of January, all of February, all of March, and all of April, and then 15 days into May, and that is not correct. So we would wanna update this to read 315 and 915. Now again, this is most pertinent for business tax return, exclusively the 1120. For a 1040, we're going to uncheck these and turn this back to read just a straight month and day, April 15th and October 15th. The next three options that we have control how this project is going to roll over or reoccur. When a project is completed, you have three options. The first option is for the project to just end and not reoccur at all. Those types of projects would be tax notices. The second option is when you complete the project, you will get a prompt that will allow you to roll that project forward or not. The most direct example we can give is for a gift tax return. Although it typically may not reoccur, there are instances where it might. You can have Office Tools prompt you and ask if you'd like to roll it forward. The third option is to have it automatically roll forward. We recommend that for a majority of the work that can roll forward, you have it set to automatically roll forward. The reason is, it is always easier to delete an extra project that may have been created than it is to miss one completely because it did not get rolled forward. To set up option one, you'll have no reoccur boxes selected. This will, in essence, when the project is completed, allow it to just end. If you would like option two, where you get a prompt asking if you would like the project to roll forward, you're going to select the option that says reoccur. Reoccur is the ability for it to reoccur, which means you will get a prompt. If you would like option three, that automatically rolls your projects forward, you'll select the reoccur box, just like option two, and the automatically rollover box. This will take your project when completed and automatically roll it forward to the next cycle. If your project is not a tax return, and it's maybe bookkeeping, you won't have the tax year calculations box selected, which will allow you to choose the interval that the given project will roll forward on. You can choose yearly or annually, weekly, semi-annually, every six months, monthly, quarterly, or bi-weekly. The last option that you have is the use due dates on rollover option. What this option does is it takes into consideration what you have selected in the skip weekends and holidays option and makes sure that when a project rolls forward that it has the correct due date. For a tax return, we would want this selected because the due date does not change from year to year. If for some reason, April 15th falls on a weekend or a holiday and it moves in the forward direction, we would not want the project to roll forward with the due date that was moved in the forward direction. We would want it to retain the due date that we have populated in the due date section here. If we want it to retain the due date that's populated into this section here, we're going to use the box here that says use due dates on rollover. An example of a project where we would not want this box selected would be something like payroll processing, where although it reoccurs bi-weekly, it will vary based off of the client's due date. In that type of project, we would want this box unselected, and we would want this section here set to do not skip. The last option that you have in this window is to auto-populate the promise date. A promise date is a delivery date that you've set for your client. For example, if for a 1040, you have a two week turnaround time frame from the day that you receive it, you'll check this box and populate in 14 days. This will allow a budget 
or delivery date that is created when that project is marked received. It will create that budget for 14 days from the day that it was marked received. The next tab of options is for assignments. In most cases, you're going to select the My Company Information option here, which pulls from the global options that you have selected in the setup menu. It's going to be very rare that you adjust options in this window, so we recommend that if you think you might, to consult one of Office Tools trainers. The next tab of options is the Billing Options section. The billing options allow for pre-filled information to populate when tracking time or creating invoices. If for a 1040 tax return you have a specific paragraph that you'd like to show on an invoice, you can populate that into the billing description section here. You can use merge fields to key in date sensitive information by clicking this box and picking one of these options. This will pre-fill that information in there so you won't have to type things like year into your descriptions every time you create an invoice. It will be automatically populated for you. You can also estimate a budget for this project definition or template if for every single instance of a 1040 you had the same budget for hours, cost, or fee, you would populate that in right here. Hours is staff hours tracked. How much time are you going to work on this actual project? Cost is based off the staff cost rate to your firm. And you can budget how much you would like this project to cost your firm based off the hours tracked. You can also budget a fee, which is going to be based off of the billable rates for each staff member and the time that was tracked by each staff. By populating in this estimated budget section, you're budgeting every 1040 or every individual tax return project that goes out by default. This section does not have to be populated in order to budget, as you can budget on a project by project basis. You can also fill in a default work code here so that when your staff is tracking time, they can skip the step of populating in their work code because you've already selected it here by default. You can also have expense items, which are non-time-based items, populated into your invoice automatically by populating that in right here and adding the expense that you'd like to track. The last tab of information is the Checklist Options tab. Checklists in Office Tools are used for items that may not be assigned to a specific staff. The reason for that is checklist items cannot be assigned to staff members specifically. These would be things that you would like to make sure get done or collected, but you aren't going to assign to a specific staff member. Those types of things that need to be assigned should be populated in to your assignment groups or the workflow of this project. If you'd like to make sure that your engagement letters have been received and sent, for example, you can select those items and add to your checklist items for that project. Once you've gone through each of the four tabs, project options, assignment options, billing options, and checklist options, you've now created a new project definition or project template.